Hey y'all, it's Asha Cerise. Welcome back to my channel. This is day eight and nine of my trip to Brazil. Got my laundry cleaned. Now I'm about to pack my bags and head to the airport. And I'll be traveling all day because I have a layover and layover in Sao Paulo <laughs> before getting to Rio later tonight. So, I'm dressed for a long day. Well, that's what I thought was going to happen. That was the original plan. So, after I cleaned the rest of my clothes, packed them up, called my Uber, said my see you later to Lorenzo, and headed to the airport, everything was all gravy. I was supposed to have a layover in Sao Paulo and then go straight to Atlanta from there. But, something ended up happening with the travel agency. They messed up. And when I tell you I was so frustrated and it was just, uh, it was just a whole day. I was there for hours. Ended up having to cancel the original ticket, buy another ticket for a flight that was going out early the next day. So I ended up having to call an Uber and head back to the Airbnb. I had enough time to take a, a nap, eat, and then head back. But when I tell you these Uber drivers be doing the most, this dude had a whole screen in his car that he was watching. Sir, y'all already drive wild enough. Please, please pay attention to the road. <laughs> As you could see, there was some type of block party going on down the street. But me and Lorenzo walked up to the boardwalk and you guessed it. I went on ahead and ordered another banana mukeka for old time sakes. <laughs> I had enough time to just take a nap and call another Uber and head there. And this Uber driver was sick just like me and a lot of other people in Brazil. And he was just down in cough syrup like it was nothing. It's been a long day, but I'm at the airport. I'm ready to find my gate. And then... I look rough as hell. <laughs> and then I go to Leo to see what I'm gonna end up doing when I get there. It's supposed to be another cloudy day. I was super tired, but everything went smoothly after this. It was actually a better flight that I got. I kind of was disappointed that I ended up spending most of the day at the airport because I could have had more time in Bahia, but everything happens for a reason. It didn't make sense to have a layover in Sao Paulo when I could go straight to Rio and it's only a two hour flight. And they give you these little things when you don't have socks, which is very convenient. America, take notes. You have to walk through a whole mall before you get to customs, which gives people the opportunity to buy items. I didn't really see that much of a price difference in the items that they had. But I guess it is convenient to get the last minute shopping in. It's my flight, but there's no gate yet until 3.20. Speaking of shopping, I managed to get a little shopping in myself at this beautiful gift shop. They had a lot of pan-made items. Again, the Orishas are heavily represented. The African culture is represented. They have little houses that are similar to Pellerino. Um, keychains, coconut shells, all type of thing. I purchased a few souvenirs and items for friends and family and just looked around to kill time before my flight. The flight was smooth. I was able to get a little sleep on the plane, but I hadn't got much sleep the night before, so I was really tired. My initial plan was to go back to the Airbnb I met Lorenzo at. He decided to stay in Bahia for a little while longer, so I was in Rio on my own. The Airbnb host didn't have any availability right away, so I thought it would be easy for me to just get a hotel and get some rest. But when I booked the hotel room, they told me I couldn't check in early. So check in wasn't for another few hours. At this point, I was irritated. Mind you, I was sick. I wasn't feeling well. I was tired just going off of a few hours of sleep. I was irritated just from the day before from dealing with the airport staff. And now you don't want to let me check in early. So I just sat here. I fell asleep, nodded off a couple of times. I even cried <laughs> at one point because I was just so frustrated. And I was just ready to be at home in my own bed at this point. But I had to switch my energy and go make something shake. Came here to freshen up. 
and change clothes in this hotel bathroom and see what Rio talk about. We gotta come in and give me some rest later. New mood unlocked. Before I got to Brazil, I had all these plans in mind. I was going to be a straight up tourist when I got to Rio. I wanted to make sure I at least got to go to Christ the Redeemer. But unfortunately, the weather just wasn't on my side. Every time I was in Rio, it was cloudy, rainy, and gloomy and a little cool. I wouldn't dare get in water that rough. Just the fact that it was coming over my feet and pulling me, I could feel the power of the tide. So anybody that gets in that water is brave. I was walking in, <laughs> walking in the rain, but it's coming down a little bit too There were a few vendors along the Copacabana boardwalk, including these ladies that offered massage as well as hair braiding. I walked in the rain for a little while on the Copacabana boardwalk before I called an Uber. I was able to look up a vegan restaurant that sparked my interest. And so I headed that way. And this time I said I was gonna try multiple items on the menu. It was called Teva Deli. My waitress was very friendly and very patient with me because I looked at that menu up and down because I wanted to make sure I got exactly what I wanted. I'm not usually a jackfruit girly, but these sounded too good to resist. Steamed Tudo Bao Chinese Bao Buns, Poison Spiced Fresh Vegusta Jackfruit, Chinese Five Spices, Pickled Carrot and Daikon Radish, Cucumber Cilantro Scallions, Sichuan Pepper Aioli. I'll take two, please. I can't remember the name of the drink, I know it was non-alcoholic and it was some type of kombucha, I believe, but it was very delicious, as were these jackfruit bao buns. The flavor was amazing, the texture was really good, and I think I should have probably just got two more of these. I would give this a 9 out of 10. 
Then came this Big Daddy Caesar salad. The salad consists of romaine lettuce, kale, Caesar dressing, smoked shiitake mushrooms, cherry tomatoes, croutons, and Parmesan cheese. Vegan, of course. I was so excited to have all these vegan options after a week of deprivation. I went on ahead and ordered some akata jay as well. I think I put a little bit too much dip on my chip. But their akata jay is house-made black eyed peas fritters, creamy karuru peanut sauce, grilled okra, spicy hearts of palm, and tomato salsa, red palm oil, and cilantro. So it sounded good. Let me start with my review of the salad. The salad was amazing. I really enjoyed the flavor profiles. It was crispy. It was delicious. I ate most of it and I took some to go. Now for the acarajé. The acarajé was one of my favorite staples in Salvador Bahia. So I was thinking because this is an elevated vegan restaurant, it's probably gonna have some different flavors that I'm not used to, but definitely delicious. But I think I just couldn't get with the flavor profiles. I believe they did too much with it and it just wasn't for me. I'm usually a eat it anyway type of girl, take it home in a to-go box. I ate one and I actually sent the other one back. Now, if I was in America, I would have been like rubbing my money back for the one I didn't eat, but I didn't even trip. They still charge me for it, it's okay. And then I had this for dessert. Yeah, I ate a lot, but you know, I gotta get some sweet. So the apple pie description is almond, sable, pastry, caramelized apples, Nevea vanilla ice cream, salty coconut caramel, and caramelized almonds. Doesn't that sound delicious? Now, I would give this a, mm, let's say 6 out of 10. I'm used to traditional American apple pie, and of course it's a lot sweeter, but it did what it needed to do. And I think for the Carage, I would give that a four. Overall, I had a wonderful experience. Hours later, I'm finally showered, dressed comfortably. It looks kind of hoochie, but dressed comfortably. <laughs> and just here in this little righty room, it ain't nothing to write home about. I just got the cheapest little room that I could. And my intention was to sleep for like three hours. But it is now 5.30. My flight leaves at 10.55. It says to be at the airport at least three hours before international flights, but I'm going to try to do four. So that's basically 11 p.m. So uh, I'm trying to be there before seven. So I'm going to relax for an hour, 6.30, call the Uber. All my stuff is packed. And I'm not even going to sleep. I'm just going to enjoy stretching out, stretching my legs, because it's going to be a long, long overnight flight to Miami. So I'm just going to enjoy being able to stretch out, and I'll sleep on the plane. I took my salad to go, so I'm about to eat this and relax. Bags are packed and ready. I was running on fumes at this point, but I did stretch out for about 45 minutes and got on up, called my Uber. This Uber driver drove with his blinker on the entire time, but we got there safely. And he was speeding. Let me show you how fast he was going. Y'all probably think that's normal, but if you know me, you know I don't deal with no speed racers. <laughs> I checked in, went to the gift shop, got a few items, and then sat at my gate for a few hours. How much do you think this whole bottle of water costs in the airport?
do the math, look it up. Thank God for comfortable seating and leg room. This flight was actually very pleasant. Outside of the fact that I was really sick, I had my mask on y'all, but I had a few coughing fits. And to think on my way to Brazil, I was the one mean mugging the lady across the row from me who was having coughing fits and sneezing, and she wouldn't cover her mouth. If I had an extra mask, I would have gave it to her, but I didn't. But anywho, I watched Insecure on this flight. For breakfast, they gave fruit and croissants. And listen at how enthused I am when I touch back down in the States. I sound so thrilled, don't I? One more flight to get to Atlanta. I had the whole road to myself, which was nice. And the flight was pretty pleasant. No issues. Safe landing. I am so, so grateful for this experience to have traveled to Brazil. I appreciate you, Lorenzo, so much for being a friend and inviting me to experience something that you love. Special shout out to Gary for all your help as well. And thank you for everyone that I met in Brazil. I'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's mama acting like she ain't seen me in years. Oh, Lord. Salvador, Bahia. 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 Salvador, Bahia. I wonder what it is. <laughs> Oh, look at the pretty painting. <laughs> wow. Like it? Yes. Look at the little church ladies. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. I got that from uh, the area that has those houses in it. Mm -hmm. They have little shops on the side that sell different things. Awesome. Look at how she's carrying that. I have to put my little artwork up. <laughs> That's pretty how they put this on one um, canvas like that. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of details on one. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Blue, the red, the yellow. As you can see, I was greeted in Atlanta with love by my mom. I showed her all the gifts that I brought. She got several of them and I had some other things for other people. And I spent the rest of the next week or so nursing my cold. <laughs> Hot toddy, anyone? Stay tuned for more healing, self-love, intentional dating, and lifestyle content. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it.